Good morning, or good afternoon, depending on when you're watching our service on YouTube and Facebook. Welcome to Old Parameters Reformed Church. We have canceled the in-person worship for today, January 9th, because of the forecast of freezing rain. And so hopefully everyone is at home safe and sound, and we pray that you can enjoy the day, but also worship with us on YouTube and Facebook. On Friday, we send out the outline of the worship service along with hymns, so hopefully you can use that and follow along at home. Today, we're only going to sing the first verse of each hymn, so hopefully you have that at home, you can follow along and sing with us. And for everyone's safety, I'll be turning my mic off during the hymn singing. But we know that even if we're scattered, we can come together through the Holy Spirit and worship God. And we know that God will be with us and protect us. So let us now be begin our worship service with our prelude. Amen. 
my mic might not have been on when I did my welcome, but hopefully you heard that through the other mic. And so we'll be singing each hymn, just the first verse. But hopefully you have found the email and pulled up our bulletin. And we now begin with our call to worship. Please join with me at home. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Nations shall come to your light, and rulers to the brightness of your rising. Amen. Our first hymn is number 66, We Three Kings of Orient Are. We'll be singing the first verse. Let us praise our God. As we prepare to hear God's word, both through our scriptures and then through our sermon, we know that if we come before God and ask for, forgive, for forgiveness, we'll find forgiveness and grace through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so for our service, our prayer confession, we'll do this in unison, so please join at home, and then we'll hear the assurance of God's forgiveness. Let us pray. God of grace and truth, in Jesus Christ, you came among us as a light shining in darkness. We confess that we have not welcomed the light or trusted good news to be good. We have closed our eyes to glory in our midst, expecting little and hoping for less. Forgive our doubt and renew our hope so that we may receive the fullness of your grace and live in the truth of Christ the Lord. Amen. Hear the assurance of God's forgiveness. Hear the good news of the gospel. As a voice from heaven said to Jesus, so God says to each of us, you are my beloved child, and with you I am well pleased. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Now hear what our Lord says about the law. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Our scripture passages for our worship service from the lectionary comes from Isaiah chapter 60 verses 1 through 6 and then Matthew 2 verses 1 through 12 and these are our epiphany lessons. As we prepare to hear God's word, let us pray. Holy One, giver of life and light, as your word is read and proclaimed, illuminate our hearts and minds, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, our lives may reflect God's glory. Amen. Hear God's word from Isaiah chapter 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. 
for darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar and your daughters, daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the, sea, of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah and those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Amen. And now our gospel lesson, Matthew 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born the king of the Jews? For we observed his star as it is as it's rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, at Bethlehem of Judea, for so it had been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. From you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with, his, with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our next hymn is number 69, and we'll be singing the first verse of O Morning Star, How Fair and Bright.
you have the bulletin at home and you're looking and you see the sermon title, Arise and Shine, and as soon as you see that, for some you might instantly just break out into song, Arise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, children of the Lord. This is why I turn off my mic often, but you, for me, if I see a rise and shine, I instantly think of that children's song that we hear in vacation Bible schools and Sunday schools and any type of children ministry. And so growing up, you might have sang that many, many times. And so when you see those three words, arise and shine, it brings you right back to that song and to that moment. It's interesting how perspective changes our perspective. Depending on our tradition and depending on where we're at, you might see these three words and not even think of that song because you've never even heard of that song. So depending on where you're coming from, where you're looking from, you get a different perspective than other people. Epiphany, for me, is a time of perspective. Yes, it is a time of God's glory shining into the darkness of this world. Yes, it is the celebration of the wise men or the magi or the kings coming to the baby Jesus following a star. And perspective all plays a part in that. For instance, Those magi, those wise men, they followed a star. That's how they knew that Jesus was born and that Jesus was the king of the Jews. And they followed and they had a little meeting with Herod, of course. But ultimately, the star is what guided them. And in fact, if we look for thousands and thousands of years, people have used stars to navigate their way. For instance, the Minoans, I probably didn't say quite right, from Crete, the island of Crete in the Mediterranean, they have records painted on caves of them using stars 3000 BCE. So people were using stars for a long time to, to guide them. And why were stars so helpful? Well, they, it's about perspective. They're so far ahead and they're not being moved by the earth. They're, they're up there. And that distance, that, that they're not moving, but we're moving, all plays a part of why stars are a fantastic way to see where you're going. And of course, if you see a star, the North Star, you head that way, you will eventually come, no matter where you're at on the earth. And so perspective plays a part into the stars and why those wise men were following it in that distance. And so when we think of epiphany, there's a sense of distance, a distance between God and us, and God's perspective may well be different than our perspective. And so epiphany is about God's perspective, and God's perspective, so to speak, shining into this earth for us. And that shining happens in darkness. And because of that distance, there is an aspect that God has a certain hiddenness to us because of us being here on earth. I use this quote on Thoughts on Thursday, but I'm going to use it again, and we'll see it being woven through the next few sermons. But... Abraham Joshua Heschel, in his book, The Prophets, he writes this about God's hiddenness. God is invisible, distant, dwelling in darkness. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways and history are shrouded in perplexity. Prophecy is a moment of unshrouding, an opening of the eyes, a lifting of the curtain. Such moments are rare in history. 
So there is a certain darkness in this world, and there's a certain aspect that we can't fully understand how God is moving or working in this world. It is, I think, fairly easy to see that there's darkness in the world. Most recently for us would be COVID-19 and all those who have died because of it, all those who have become sick and in hospitals, all those things that have been uprooted and turned over because of trying to be safe with COVID. And we see then within our world that it does become a political thing and different sides have different opinions and we fight about it. All part of that cloudiness and the darkness we find in this world. Even a simple thing as a, a storm. We have the ice storm coming. It, will it come? Will it not? If I can look on the computer and see what the forecast is, but I'm not in control of it. We had those tornadoes whip through the middle part of the United States. Total devastation in some cities and towns. And we see that and that we know that to be destruction and darkness in this world. Anyone who has lost a loved one to cancer or has dealt with cancer themselves know the pain and suffering that that brings. And when that happens, we, we do wonder, why is this happening? Why can't we be saved from this or healed from this? And we see some people be healed from cancer and some people not. And so part of the pain and suffering of the world is what brings cloudiness and our a lack of understanding of how God is working in this world. What are other things that make God hidden? Well, if we don't share the light of God with others, right, we're called to do that. There's a hiddenness because of that. If we're not sharing the light in the gospel and sharing God's grace with other people, that can only bring more hiddenness. What other things hide us from seeing God? I was reminded that we don't always see God working because we're not paying attention. I have mentioned this before, but at the manse, at the kitchen window, it overlooks the east and we see the sunrise. And it can be a beautiful sunrise. This week, I was busy trying to get ready to come to the office. I was, you know, wiping the counters down, washing all the dishes that I had used for breakfast and putting them into the dishwasher. And in my busyness of dishwashing, I wasn't looking out of the window. And in one little glance, I looked up and out the window, I saw the perfect round sun. It was in a little bit of a haze, but it was shining nonetheless. And it just took my breath away for a moment. And I thought to myself, I could have missed that. If I didn't pay attention, if I didn't look up, I wouldn't have seen the sun. And been moved by that brightness and that shining in the wonder. And that made me think, even if I would have missed it, it would, would have still happened. The truth would have still been there. It would have still been shining. I would just have not paid attention to it. So there is a part of the darkness of this world is that we're not paying attention to God's activity and working in this world. Another part of the cloudiness of this world or not seeing God's action is because if we're honest, our perspective as earthlings will never be able to fully comprehend or grasp God's perspective. I love these words from Isaiah chapter 55 where it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my, are my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. That speaks to perspective, right? That God's perspective is higher 
more fuller than our own. And so it's hard sometimes to see how all thing, how all the things are working together because God's perspective is different than ours. And that even, if you go a little bit further, sometimes we get so wrapped up in our own perspective that we're unable to see the truth that is all around us. And we can't see where God is working or even where God is guiding us. We get so inwardly focused. So there has to be a sense where we realize and know we won't know everything. We won't know all the plans and all the timing and how everything will work out. And if you're like me, you're like, whoa, 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 I want to know everything. I want to know how it's going to work out. What plans are going to unfold? Today, we often don't use the stars, even though we're using satellites far away from us. But if you use GPS, they all will almost tell you inch by inch how to get somewhere. Those wise men were following a star, not GPS. There was uncertainty and unknowns. And they just followed the star because they were moved to do so. And in that uncertainty and that unknown, there was something certain. But it was truly an adventure or a journey. And so an epiphany, it is about perspective, but it's also, to me, about a journey. We are called on a journey of faith to trust in God, to look for God's light shining in the darkness, and to share that light with the world. And so, just as the wise men, let us look for the light of God shining in this world, and be led to go and to bring gifts and to share. And in that light, I love the passage in Isaiah. It says, your heart shall thrill and rejoice. So we're also supposed to thrill and rejoice in the light of God. So in this uncertainty, in this unknown, in this journeying, we're also thrilled to be there and we're rejoicing. And so, as Epiphany unfolds and the light of God reveals new ways to us, let us be open to where God is working and moving in this world. Amen. We were going to have an installation service for our new deacon, Deacon Barb Roberts, and we'll hopefully do that next Sunday. And so we'll now move to our prayer of intercession and conclude with the Lord's Prayer. I, I'm going to lead us in our prayer of intercession. It's going to be a little bit different. I'll first use the welcoming prayer written by Thomas Keaton. He's not the one who came up with that spiritual practice, but he, he wrote uh, a prayer for the welcoming practice. And so I'm going to lift that prayer up, and it, that that prayer ends by saying, I open to the love and presence of God and God's action within. After I do the prayer, then we'll be silent for a time. And I ask that at home you're silent and you repeat in your head several times that last line. I open to the love and presence of God and God's action within. And then we'll conclude with the Lord's prayer when I prompt us for that. So let us pray. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I welcome everything that comes to me today because I know it's for my healing. I welcome all thoughts, feelings, emotions, and persons, situations, and conditions. I let go of my desire for power and control. I let go of my desire for affection, esteem, approval, and pleasure. I let go of my desire for survival and security. I let go of my desire to change any situation, condition, person, or myself. I open to the love and presence of God and God's action 
within. Let us silently, let us silently prayer. I open to the love and presence of God and God's action within. And now we lift up the words that our Lord Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We're about to sing our last hymn. It, it has been a different service. Stuart, you and I have not done a, a service by ourselves to broadcast virtually. It almost has been almost a year yeah. since we've done that. And so... We are thankful for the technology that even in bad weather we can have service and you can be a part of it through YouTube and Facebook, but we do miss being all together and look forward to that next Sunday. So our closing hymn is number 63, As with Gladness Men of Old will sing the first hymn. Let us sing to our God. God's blessing. May the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you today and the days to follow. Amen. Amen.